Hey, what's up? It's Emily, and you are listening or watching the On The Mic Podcast. On The Mic Podcast. Okay, great. Okay, so do you want to introduce yourself to everyone who's watching or listening to this? Sure, yeah. yeah. My name is Emily. I do a night show right now in Washington, D.C. I work for iHeartRadio, so I'm on Hot 99.5 here in Washington, D.C., and then I voice track a whole bunch of stations across the country. Okay. Let's jump into the first question. It is, when you were a kid, did you even imagine you would be in radio today? Hey, you know there what? he is. There we uh, go. Hello. Hello. Hey. Perfect timing. You're jumping in yeah. on the first question right away, right out the gate. Oh, wow. He just asked me, he just asked if I was little, did I ever think I'd be in radio? And I don't think I did. I don't necessarily think that, actually, I do remember when I was a little kid, one time I was always really good with knowing song lyrics but I was horrible with knowing names mm-hmm. or artists of songs. And I mm-hmm. remember saying out loud one day, I was like, man, if I had to work in a job where I had to know song titles and artists, like I'd be screwed. I do not know them. And lo and behold, that is my job. <laughs> so no, I definitely didn't think I was going to work in radio when I was younger. I definitely knew something with music and something with entertainment is what I wanted to do. And that's how I ended up here. But I, I just don't think in my brain, I even thought radio was an option. It's cool. And then how did you get into this radio industry? So I got into radio, kind of a sad story at the beginning. But I remember when I was in college, <laughs> I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, I was in journalism at the time, but I knew that wasn't the right fit for me. I knew I wanted to do something more with Uh, entertainment and not so news focused and Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with at the time Sirius XM had uh, a radio station it was Cosmo Radio so it was like Cosmo the magazine but on the radio Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with it I listened Mm -hmm. to it all the time and I just I loved it so much and I remember one summer I was working at a summer camp I was a counselor there Mm -hmm. I was a staff member and it was you know, I'd been there all summer. And when you work at a summer camp, you're kind of like in your own little world and reality just kind of ceases to exist. And I got a phone call and my parents were like, your grandfather is going to die. You need to leave camp and drive to the ra- or drive to the hospital like he's going to die today. And so obviously that was mm-hmm. kind of a shock to the system. And I remember getting in my car and thinking like, I, just, I need to listen to something that's going to take me out of this headspace of, of where I'm at. And I didn't know any mm-hmm. of the local radio stations where I was because it was like a really small area far from where I lived. It was like a three hour drive to the hospital. I'm sorry. Hmm. I was flipping through the radio stations and that's when I found Cosmo Radio for the first time. Oh, wow. And I just I was listening to this, you know, this radio station that just took my brain out of the space that it was in, out of reality, and kind of just like transported me into this world. And in that moment, I was like, that is so powerful. That is so cool. For three hours, I literally forgot where I was. And I forgot that I was, you know, about to drive to the hospital to watch my grandfather die. And uh, I was like, that was so powerful. I want to do that for the rest of my life. I want to be able to be that person for someone else. So that's kind of how it sparked my interest in radio. And uh, yeah, I hope I can do that for someone else. That's cool. Awesome. It's amazing. I like that. Man. Yeah, it's weird to look back yeah. on that too, because I feel like I feel like you don't necessarily have those moments where you realize like this this moment defined my life, but it's kind of crazy to like look back on it and be like able to remember so vividly yeah. that it that it That's not really, that it um, <laughs> defined my life so strongly. That's awesome. And then, what do you like about getting to work for iHeart Media? What do you like about that? Uh, I love being able to connect with people. I think it's really cool to just be able to connect with people in a way in which they still have kind of some autonomy as to like who I am, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not necessarily yeah. someone that they know, but they feel like they know me, but there's still that level of like, mm-hmm. they can kind of, you know, they can craft me into whatever kind of companion that they need in the moment. If if they need a friend that, you know, is there for them in the car every night, they know that I'm there and it's cool. And yeah. I get, you know, I get phone calls from people. There's someone that calls me like almost every night just to chit chat. I think just being able to connect with people oh. in a way in which not most people get to is really cool. Artist interviews are always a really good mm-hmm. time. I'm a huge music person. I love music. It's my life. I perform actually outside of radio. Like I, I sing. So um, being able to connect with artists, the artists that I love and being able to kind of dig into, mm-hmm. you know, like, how are you creating these songs that I love and I listen to? It's really cool. That's awesome. Thing for me, too. I like listening and, yeah, I like listening to music as well. It's like fun getting to do like an internet radio station. You can gain to play the music. 
that I love like getting to listen to and all that and that people getting to listen to. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's always exciting when when people, you know, like mutually share the same interests that you do and you can kind of like find Mm -hmm. those people, seek them out and, you know, start a conversation. And it's almost also (laughs) like we get this really cool ability to kind of like peel back the curtain on things. And there's nothing worse than, you know, wanting to find an interview with an artist and wanting a question answered so badly. And, you know, they don't answer it. They don't see it in the interview. But being able to get the opportunity to interview certain artists and ask them the things that I've always wanted to know. Cool. It's it, it's it's also it's also good when you can help indie artists out and uh, get their music out and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. I wish we could do more of that in top forties. I wish there was like a little bit more, you know, ability to like play whatever I wanted. But it is really cool yeah. to see to see artists that we you know we start as like new music and then to see their career take off. Like Kate McRae is someone that I've um, yeah. seen online for years. <laughs> She like had a YouTube channel where she was just like writing little songs here and there, and now she is huge. She was wow. just here in DC. She mm-hmm. performed at Jingle Ball. Got to uh, interview oh, yeah. her and actually told her in the interview. I was like, I've been watching you for years. Like it's so cool to just kind of see their journey. So it's always exciting to kind of like see where someone starts and just see them turn into a superstar. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. And then, what do you like about getting to be a radio DJ? What do I like? I think it's pretty yeah. cool that I get paid to listen to music and just talk say the kind of things that pop into my head yeah i mean like i get to sit on instagram and social media and scroll through it and you know i'm not in trouble for doing that at work it's like literally part of my job so i am someone who loves consuming media anyway and i would be doing it regardless of if i worked in radio or not so i think the fact that i can do it on the clock is pretty fun and do the things that i kind of like would do in my spare time get paid to do it that's good then what's your favorite thing about getting to work with Oh, well, it's been really tough to do. I'm not going to lie for the past few years because I'm working from home a lot. I've been going back in the station, but my schedule, mm-hmm. I work night. So I don't really see a ton of my coworkers right now, but it is always nice. Like events like Jingle Ball that we all get to come together and it's just it's so cool to see and it's so magical. And I mean, it's a group of people that, you know, we all enjoy doing the same thing. It's always a fun time. It's always cool, too, because, like, creative minds, when you have a bunch of them together, obviously, the more creative minds are in one room, the more you get to see created or you get to, you know, get to see what people come up with. So That's good. What's your favorite thing about being to interact and talk to your listeners? I think my favorite thing is just being able to do it consistently or to see people that I've connected with and then being able to reconnect or truthfully, like, seeing how excited people get when, like, they remember, like, think of myself as like anything like I just think my like I go sit in a room and I get to talk I I genuinely forget that there are other people who are listening to what I have to say like I genuinely forget you know I work at night I'm by myself in the studio it's just me like I don't see Mm -hmm. anyone until we do an event or something and so like when I see like oh there is like a real person on the other side of that it's really cool it's like really I think Mm -hmm. it's almost as surreal for me as it is for someone else so it's like a really fun I don't know it's a really fun moment that's good I like that what's your favorite part about Doing stuff in radio. I just like to to listen to music and play wherever I want, and to help people. Like I love helping people. I'm like I'm like I'm I'm like basically how you started. Like I I wanted I know I wanted to do something with music, but I also wanted to do something with like 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 entertaining people. Uh, if 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 the radio wasn't gonna work out, I was gonna try to find a way to be like a voice actor or something, or work for the police or something, something like that. Be a dispatcher for the police or something. To do with my with my voice, I was gonna do that. But radio found me and it's been here for like eleven years. So well, I guess ten years. Yeah, ten years. So yeah, that's my favorite part. I just love to be around. I love that radio found you. Yeah, radio found me. Yeah, it was just yeah, it, it just a. Uh, I love that. Just like a. I feel like it's one of those, it is one of those jobs that, it is one of those jobs that like it finds you. Like, I don't think anyone necessarily like Mm -hmm. goes into it. I mean, maybe I, I lied. Actually, there are some people I feel like that do that, that know like this is what they want to do. But a lot of us, I feel like just kind of, it's it's an opportunity that like falls into your lap and you're like, I don't even know what I would be doing if this didn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, um, how did you? (laughs) Yeah. Actually in the process of kind of just maneuvering my career in radio and like pivoting, I almost walked away fully. And like, there's a part of me that was like, I I can't walk away fully. Like I I have to at least still have. Because there's, there's like moments when you get like burned out and stuff. I've been, I've been through those moments. Okay, I'm done with this. No more, no more radio for me. 
And then like mm-hmm. the, uh, the, yeah. a few months later, okay, I'm, I'm back. I know here. tonight I tonight I have to voice track like 15 shows. So I'm in one of those moods where I'm like super anxious because I'm like, I have so much I want to do. I want to make it good, but also like I got to get mm-hmm. it done. So I feel yeah. that. I definitely feel that. <laughs> but there's worse things you could be doing with your uh, life, I feel like. so. Do you remember your first That's day good. on the radio? I do. You actually, I remember like the first like month or two more so than the first day, but I do remember my first, my first day on my own show. I definitely remember. So I had been like, I'd worked as an intern before I worked, I interned for a morning show and then I interned for a different morning show in New York. And then I came back to Michigan. I'm from Michigan originally. So I interned for Mojo in the morning. Loved it. I literally like would wake up every morning excited to like go into the studio and do that. And then I left and went to Sirius XM. And ended up interning for Hits One Morning Mashup. And then came back to Michigan, got back in the building and was doing all of these things and worked in the promotions department for a little while and like went back to the morning show. And like, I was like, okay, I need to figure out what's next. And I remember uh, mm-hmm. sitting down with the morning show host and he was like, you need to make an air check. And so I sent an air check and they like literally put me on the air the next day. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So, I'd, you know, I'd been, you know, working and prepping and doing all these things for like three or four years just because I was like, I don't even know like where to go. And I think that's a big lesson, too, is like if you want to do something in this industry, like speak up, be vocal, take the time to like learn. And yeah. like it, I did a lot of stuff for free, like a ton of stuff for free. But that set mm-hmm. me up to like literally I sent an air check in the next day. They put me on the air. So it, it all worked out. But I definitely had oh. to grind a lot before I got there. But thank God the person that I um, I had like a promotions event with one of my coworkers who had also done air shifts before. And it, thank God I worked with him mm-hmm. because I was doing a four to six a.m. shift on a Saturday. And, like no one was in the building. Wow. And like before my shift, he was like, let me set you up. Let me show you what you need to do. And I was like, thank God for you, because I would have been mm-hmm. not on the air. So, yeah, I do remember. <laughs> That's I was awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Terrified, but yeah, but I felt ready because I'd been around it for so long, you know, and spent like three or four years learning. So mm-hmm. I was ready. That's good. That's amazing. Yeah. I know when I had my first show, I was like, after I got done, I was fine during the show. I did what I had to do. And then when I, once I got done, I was like, oh my gosh, did I just do that? Did I actually talk on the radio? <laughs> yeah. I, I was re- like shaking. I was like, <laughs> yep. Feeling so weird. Yeah. See, I didn't. I didn't do mine live, so I voice tracked it. So I remember, like, I think I like woke up at like six a.m. to like hear a break or something, and I was like, "Oh my yeah. god, did that just happen?" And then I remember there was another time where it used to take it used to take me so long to to do a show because I had never done something live. Now I do my shows live every night, but I remember it would take me forever to voice track like a two hour show because I just wanted everything to be perfect. Like I just it took me forever. I remember one time I accidentally left the light on in my car or something while I was voice tracking, and so my car died. My dad had to like come to the station and jump my car because I don't even know. I think I fell asleep in my car waiting for him. It was a mess. But I just, I wanted the show to be perfect that I was just like, oh my God, what do I do? That's good. What did you do before radio? So I, okay, so when I graduated college, so I entered my senior year of college with the morning show in iHeart. And then the summer after I graduated, I went right to New York to intern. And so then when I came back from New York, I was basically trying to get back into the building in iHeart. And I was helping them out. I wasn't hired officially, but I was helping them out with like street team stuff that they needed. And I was working in retail and I was like teaching like fitness classes and Mm -hmm. doing all that stuff on the side. I was teaching or I was working in retail. I think I worked at like Lord and Taylor for a while. I think I got back from New York in September. And then I finally, I think I got officially hired on the promo team in January. So I was doing retail. I was doing like odd part-time jobs, hot bar classes, like fitness classes for a little while, doing like four different things at one time just because I was making like no money working part-time in radio. And then finally got my show. (laughs) Where do you see radio in like 10 years? from now I don't see radio in 10 years I, I think podcasting is going to be huge so props to you guys for getting in on it now mm. I feel like personally to be honest and I said this earlier that I was you know trying to pivot and like transition out of radio personally like my whole dream I wanted to be on a morning show that's obviously where I got my start I loved every second of it and I work in top 40s which you know like we don't talk a ton at night in top 40s obviously you get yeah. opportunities but you can't talk for like five minutes about something you have about a minute or two at the longest and so Mm -hmm. honestly a minute at the longest and you know I want to work in long form content and I think even with morning shows now just the way that those are being structured it's changing a little bit so I really 
foresee most people in radio having like a side podcast. I feel like in any, if you're in any sort of media, mm-hmm. you can't just be on one platform. I feel like you have to be plugged in in so many different places. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I foresee radio looking, you know, the on air portion, I foresee kind of saying kind of similar to what it's like now, but I feel like more or mostly all radio people are going to have to be plugged in on, you know, Twitter and uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. Snapchat, Twitch. I feel like a lot of radio people are, you know, doing supplementary content in which you can kind of go deeper and have more of an opinion and be a little bit more polarizing if you want to and just be more yourself yeah. on those platforms yeah and obviously radio is going to be a bit more like even feel. i think when i when i started doing the podcasting mm-hmm. the video format of podcasting wasn't even a, really a thing because i started like in 20 20- 17 with my mm-hmm. podcast but my with the podcast i have now but with the podcast i started out with in 2011 which was really crappy there, there wasn't nobody doing video podcasts it's just audio podcasts so i think the video portion is definitely going to be a big yeah. thing in the future yeah no for sure i feel like video is so yeah. easily accessible and like everyone almost like expects video you know unless you're driving mm-hmm. or doing something where you can't watch but i feel like mm-hmm. there's it's so easy to find video content now that people like assume that there's going to be a video component so yeah i agree that that video is going to have a big role. you know they say um, huh. they say and podcasts things digitally. the longer they are the, the, the better they are mm-hmm. yeah, like if, yeah. you, if you last for like 10 episodes you're you're good if you, if you get past the 10 mm-hmm. episodes yeah. you're, you're good cool. yeah. awesome yeah. so when it comes to like being on different iHeart radio stations, I think it's cool. Like there's there's so many cities or places that I've always wanted to go to or visit or live in. And like personally knowing like, oh, I've been on the radio there. I feel like I know a little bit about them. Like I, you know, I do my research. I try to go to those places or stay plugged in. It, I feel like it's just kind of like widen my view on the world. Mm-hmm. Also, it just makes me want to travel more and like see the places that I'm talking about. And it's cool too to kind of just like see the differences. There's like subtle differences in playlists throughout the country and just like seeing, you know, like what works in what cities and what doesn't work in other cities. It's kind of interesting just to get like a, a wider snapshot of just, you know, where you live and where you are and just being more informed with what's going on in the world. Yeah. What I like about a night show is I feel like you just have a, a little bit more freedom than any, anywhere else. People mm-hmm. are kind of just like, I don't know, I don't really ask for permission. I kind of just do things and hope my boss is listening. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't really go that far out of the box, but <laughs> yeah, it more does freedom. feel, it just, it feels a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. And just kind of like, well, okay whatever whereas like you know something during the day it just feels so visible and sometimes you can tend to overthink you know sometimes you can second guess your way out of things because you're like there's so many people listening blah 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 or you know people are paying attention or, i don't know something at night just feels so relaxed and a weekend show is fun because i feel like on the weekends it, people are just in a different vibe and it's just it's a different vibe um mm-hmm. you get a different audience it's always fun when you have a new audience and uh it's fun to be a part of people's weekend i mean there's one thing to be part of their work day and the monotony of a day but to be part of someone's weekend like they're having fun you're having fun it's just a different vibe mm-hmm. yeah you asked if i would recommend going to college to be radio dj i don't me either i definitely don't recommend going to college to be radio no. dj that might be some really bad advice but uh i don't think it's necessary at all i mean i went to school for journalism Mm -hmm. and i learned a lot in that respect but i don't use any of it really everything Mm -hmm. that taught me anything i know came from an internship so i think Mm -hmm. any sort of hands-on experience that you can get yeah i mean when you're doing stuff in school i mean even college radio is just so different than like terrestrial radio in general it's it's a whole different experience you know you're not like you're not working for a company you know a company's bottom line is yeah Whereas a college, college, mm-hmm. I mean, yes, a college has their bottom line of money, but it's also, you know, like their, their goal is to teach you. Whereas like your job's mm-hmm. goal is not necessarily to teach you, it's to make money. So oh. it's just to, the stakes are different. And I think that learning hands-on in like the real world is always going to prepare you more than mm-hmm. something in like a learning environment. I mean, I don't yeah. know, personally, that's just, I, I feel like I would rather get thrown right in and like learn what I need to learn that way. It's not like mm. you're, you know, saving lives or like doing surgery <laughs> where you have to like know certain yeah. things. It's very mm-hmm. much a job where you learn what you need to know by doing it. So I think that's yeah. a better way to do it. I had uh, two internships while I was in college. One wow. at one period of time, they were both at the same time. So <laughs> I feel like my grades, honestly, my senior year suffered because I was just interning so much. And one of my professors mm-hmm. totally thought I was an idiot because I was like constantly just like, I had like a photography class. And I just remember I was so mm-hmm. tired because I was doing morning show internships and I was a full-time student. By the time I had this nighttime class, like I I was so tired. I was like taking the photos last minute and she was like, what are you doing? But like, I was so focused on... <laughs> 
<laughs> my internship, that didn't matter. And like my grades never really mattered past that. So for me, interning worked out. I don't want to say that for all fields because it's not true about radio for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You asked if connection is important. And I think that is yeah. that is the whole reason, you know, that that's the whole reason why we're doing mm-hmm. this. I mean, yeah, that's the yeah. whole difference between radio and a pot up. Uh, Sorry, not a podcast, a playlist or radio and, you know, Mm -hmm. like Pandora or anything that you could play on your phone. There's no connection. You don't have a person there. And that's literally like the thing that we offer that's different. And it's live. It's local. It's immediate. I mean, podcasts Mm -hmm. are awesome, too, but it's not in the moment. You can't like pull out your phone, call the station and talk to a real life person. So I think Mm -hmm. that if connection isn't at the forefront of what you're doing, then you need to reevaluate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any tips on how to get hired for iHeartMedia? Yeah. Make an air check. Make an air check. Try it out. Put yourself out there. And the best way to make an air check is to know the kind of station that you want to be on and listen to that station. You know, there's iHeartRadio app. Mm -hmm. It's a free app. You can literally find any station in the country that you want to listen to. Turn them on. Listen to what Mm -hmm. they sound like. See what they're talking about. Listen to the types of imaging that they have. Mm -hmm. You can hear how they Mm -hmm. formulate the station and, you know, the types of things that they're saying if if their imaging is more sarcastic than tailor your content you know to like a little bit more sarcastic or Mm -hmm. just just get a feel for the vibe of where you want to be and where you can see yourself that's cool make an air check put yourself out there send it to program directors Mm -hmm. and do it and practice you know practice but the literal first step is just doing it you know all i did to get my first radio show was i uh me and my friend was talking in the hallway while while I was at radio school and my cause my teacher wouldn't let me be on air yet. So I was during it was it, this was during summer school and we was just talking and having a good time and joking around and he uh, the teacher's A comes comes up and tells and tells and tells us, Hey, you guys should have your own radio show and I say, like, Yeah, we yeah. should. Yeah. And then like a few months later, yeah. we had our own morning show for like two and a half years. And it was great. Yeah, for you, man. Oh, all, awesome. all, all yeah. I mean, literally, me. the first step is just be to myself. Do it. Even if it's not good, just just start. You'll always, you know, you'll yeah. only learn by you don't know what you don't know yet, right? So you have to like learn by doing. Yeah. 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 Who in radio would I want to give a shout out to? I want to give a shout yeah. out to Mojo from Mojo in the Morning. Actually, that whole show, they literally taught me everything I know. <laughs> and like producer Rachel, who was she's not the producer anymore, but she was kind of the person that like took me under her wing same with mojo and kind of just mm-hmm. like melded me into who i am also my boss tony mm-hmm. my old boss my boss now Cruz, who's just a good dude mm-hmm. they were kind of like my radio i don't know like my radio parents pretty much taught wow. me everything and then honestly like any programmer or program director that's like giving me a shot you know there are some program directors that like i listen to or voice track for and they always give me really good feedback but also i, I gotta say too like the women like shannon from mojo in the morning just like mm-hmm. seeing a woman and and seeing that she can be more than just like a laugh track because for a long time women were literally just looked at as like a laugh track shannon from mojo in the mm-hmm. morning was the woman that is inspired me to to want to be more to you know to, she showed me like you can you can contribute like you know mm. not that I didn't think that we couldn't but just having her as such a good example while I was learning and and I learned a lot from Shannon I kind of hurt you that's awesome yes then your favorite interview that you have like gotten to talk to or this has been your favorite interview I think my favorite one was recent. Yeah, my favorite one was recently, and it was Saweetie. I don't know. She just has the best energy. I talked to her at Jingle Ball. It was one of the first ones I got to do post-COVID. So it was one of the first ones back live. So it just hit different. And she was just a great energy. She was so much fun. Also, Tate McRae was fun, too. That's amazing. Really good. I think all of, the, all of the ones I did recently at Jingle Ball were fun because, you know, I feel like coming off of COVID, it's just nice to be back mm-hmm. in person. Because we did a bunch on Zoom recently. Yeah. And getting <laughs> to do them in real life. Who's your favorite radio DJ? Yeah. Ooh, my favorite radio DJ? Like the one that you like, um, on like, um, look up to the most mojo hands down mojo it's awesome yeah it's cool mm. forever and always he will always have a place in my heart that is number one mine is um ryan seacrest <laughs> hands down I yeah be like him just like yeah uh, he's good yeah he's well i mean i That's i love i wanted to intern for him forever ago actually i will say too hmm. i uh i used to love taylor strecker she was the one that had a show on cosmo radio that i used to listen to she mm-hmm. was very also and i met her once she's a podcast now but she was very very much a woman that had her own morning show and like rushed hmm. it oh she was so good so funny her podcast is wow. great if you want to listen to it she has like two or something i don't hmm. know she's 
great. She's hilarious. And just very um hmm. she's very transparent, very open. And that's how mm-hmm. you need to be in radio. She doesn't hide anything yeah. and just puts herself out there. Yeah. Great. Her interviews are always incredible. That's this awesome. uh this guy one time told me that that I was <laughs> raw for his station. I'm like, dude, that's just that's just how I am. I'm just raw. I can't help it. That's my that's my personality. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave if you think I'm raw, too raw for yeah. your station. No. <laughs> but hey, just knowing like knowing what you have to bring to the table yeah, is always good, exactly. you know. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks guys. This was so much fun. It's so nice Welcome. to know you guys. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Where um and then the last and important. Well, yeah. Where can people follow you at on yeah. social media? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can find me. Uh, it's Emily on air, ITS, Emily on air, pretty much anywhere. Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Then if anyone wants to give you a listen, what can they listen to you on? You can find me on the iHeartRadio app. I do night on Hot 99.5 in DC, also on KC101 in Connecticut. And then weekends, I'm all over the place at different times. Just open up the iHeartRadio app. Mm-hmm. Maybe just search my name. 